of a mental health crisis arrested. This video has never been seen until right now. First Lord 4 investigate Susan L. Corey uncovers footage police tried to keep from the public while the teen's family claims it needs to be seen as they question how police responded. As Interstate 270 curves through St. Louis County, leaving SSM Health DePaul Hospital in its shadow, this road brings reminders it only takes a moment to change everything. He needed me and I wasn't there. Nobody was there to protect him. About to get on your knees. She tried tackling him. He even pushed her off. I in the bed. He had no support and he needed that. And the police should have been the first ones to offer that. <laughs> This mom hasn't come here until now. Walking this way, squinting in the light to find the spot her 14-year-old son ended up in handcuffs on a day he was fighting his own darkness. One of the top times that he's been in crisis, this was one of them. We're not naming the family to protect her son, who was a patient at SSM DePaul, getting help after suicide attempts. He struggles with elopement and anxiety and impulsiveness. On April 9th, she says her son was supposed to be transported by ambulance to a children's psychiatric hospital a few miles away. She would meet him there for check-in. They actually put him in the back of a taxi cab, but things didn't go as planned. He ran. He got his opportunity and he ran. Surveillance and officer body camera video combined with police records give another view of what happened. The mom got this footage from police and shared it with First Floor 4 investigators. The department wouldn't give us any video, claiming it involves a minor, so it's closed to the public. But his mom believes this is something you should see. I think they violated so many of his rights. A Bridgeton police report shows officers were sent to a hospital parking lot for an assault involving a nurse and an undescribed suspect. At the same time, Officer Tamani Swope was at another part of the hospital helping with a food drive. The report says a nurse told her he was running and pointed to a male running towards the woods across the street. Swope yelled to stop and started running after him, thinking he was the assault suspect. But the nurse was talking about her 14-year-old patient. They admitted many times that they misidentified my son. There are gaps in the video the family got from police. It doesn't show the moment the teen ran or Swope chasing him. The officer's body camera was not on. Did police ever tell you why her body camera was not turned on? They did. They said that she was doing a food drive and she kept bending down and she kept turning it off. Or she turned it off because it kept signaling that an officer was in need. The police report claims in the woods, the teen began walking towards Swope in an aggressive manner. She feared the much larger suspect was going to assault her and used her taser. The report says the teen saw it and turned, so the prongs hit the back of his shirt. He pulled them off and kept running. I don't believe that for one second. My son, once he's gone, he's gone with the wind and he's not stopping. And I feel like that, that part of the report was fabricated. This surveillance video of the street outside the woods is the first time we see him. He's kind of walking to catch his breath. Swope runs at him and the two are almost off camera when you see Swope fall back just as a second officer arrives. His body camera was rolling while he grabs the team. Surveillance video captures Swope get up and fall again. The police report says she collapsed because she just dislocated and fractured her left elbow. She did it to herself, absolutely. She fell, she couldn't keep her balance. Then they started placing blame on my son like he assaulted her and blamed him for fracturing her arm. Swope helps the other officer pin the team while more police arrive. At this point, the audio cuts out for 10 seconds. Police won't tell us how that happened. You can see a third officer pull the boy's hair and lean over saying something. As he lets go, the sound comes back. The teen kneels in handcuffs. As the teen is put in the back of a police car, an officer says something that's hard to hear on the video, but the teen reacts visibly upset. The initial call for an assault involving a nurse and an undescribed suspect 
had nothing to do with the teen. First Alert 4 investigates uncovered that police report. The suspect was a female driver in a case of road rage that escalated into a physical fight between the two women. What's more, the assault happened on the other side of the hospital from where Swope spotted the teen. Hi, this is Susan O'Quarry with KMOV. We called Bridgeton Police. Chief Mark Masati told us no comment. They had an officer injured. Police make honest mistakes. St. Louis University law professor Dr. Anders Walker says mistaken identity cases can happen. If someone's reported a crime and assault and they show up and someone's running away, they can ask that they stop. And if they don't stop, they have probable cause to arrest. But what's the minor doing running through the parking lot? The teen was under the care of SSM Health DePaul. The hospital won't talk to First Alert 4 Investigates about how he slipped away. Emailing us, the patient was a minor and it would violate our policy to discuss further. Recording. But hospital staff did talk to police that day while an officer's <laughs> body camera recorded. Is a transport van provided through the call? No, it's a transportation service that they use. So he hadn't made it into the car yet? He was like in the process? Yeah, <laughs> in this bolted yeah. towards the woods. Beyond the woods lies the interstate. That's all I could think about was he was running for the overpass as he had did before. Talk to me about it. What, what's going on? A few months earlier and 15 miles away, the team straddled an I-70 overpass threatening to jump. An O'Fallon police officer found ways to get closer and then pull the team to safety. I was just so thankful that they were there for him that day. The video from O'Fallon is a stark contrast to the footage from Bridgeton Police. He hadn't done anything criminal. He was a victim himself. They were not trained to handle the situation. A mom watching her son in crisis, already fighting himself. And now facing criminal charges. Did he ever had an understanding of why the police officer was chasing after him? He thought he was going back to the facility that he did not want to go back to. He needed help. He needs saving from himself at that point. <laughs> All Bridge and police did request criminal charges. The teen's family tells us prosecutors decided not to file any. A big gap here is the fact that there's no body camera video from the officer who started the chase all because she never turned her camera on. That violates department policy and she could be disciplined for that. But in Missouri, those records are not open to the public, meaning we don't know what came from this unless the department tells us. The chief made it clear though, they have no comment. Susan L. Corey.